one more question, and then I think our speaker is probably falling off her face. She's gone from province to province. If we can mention, she's got another day in another province tomorrow. So please. My name is uh, Graham Steele. Um, I am the uh, the environment critic for the New Democratic Party here in Nova Scotia. I just wanted to quickly note that there are some elected officials in the mm -hmm. room. My colleague Leonard Prayer of the MLA for Halifax Citadel. And Megan Leslie, the Member of Parliament for Halifax, is over there. I wanted to ask you about um, financing. Uh, you, you had mentioned that the feed-in tariff, which our party supports, provides the stable funding stream that is required for banks to provide financing. But with one of the charts that you showed, you also alluded quickly to other innovative financing options that allow funding to be provided to renewable energy projects. And I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about uh, innovative financing options that allow these projects to go forward. The major, the two major ways of financing, all three actually, are, and probably I don't know many, because probably there are many schemes out there that I just don't know. So let me tell you about the schemes that I know. Um, one is of course you have a home and you buy a piece of equipment and you put it on top of the roof. And uh, in order to do that, you don't do this as, as you as a natural person, but you, you found a company that does it, because that com company can you know, have had some tax benefits from that. So it can deal differently with the value added tax than you can do as a, as a personal owner. It can, um, and ha has a number of other tax benefits, but still you as the owner of that company will be responsible to get uh, the credit from the bank. Um, that, that works quite well, it's very established, uh, and, and retail banks understand it and give you the money for it if you have the credit, of course, and they wouldn't give it to anybody. But uh, it's, it's acknowledged very well. Um, the second scheme that came up uh, is the, the closed fund model, where people would invest 5,000 or 10,000 or 20,000 euros into a, a fund, buy a station, an equity fund, that would then go out and a couple of million euros and then go out and raise uh, finance from some specialized bank, mostly uh, Paris legal banks in, in the lands uh, in, in the different states of Germany, development banks also, but also private banks, and, and put all these uh, many tens of million euros into a wind farm. This is a very traditional model. This was developed for wind farms. It was then transferred to large solar installations, like multi megawatt installations on the ground. And actually, uh, since we are also a little bit uh, short in space for these uh, developments in Germany, uh, these funds now go and raise these funds in uh, the equity stakes in Germany, and then go and invest in Spain and Italy. So uh, this, this is actually a model how we uh, in export investment. And, and, and the people who buy these stakes in these funds are lawyers, inventors, whose alternative investments would be um, money management accounts. So, uh, rather, even the 5% that you can get from these kinds of uh, funds uh, are a rather uh, secure investment and give you a better rate of return than many alternative investments. So people do use this for their retirement uh, benefits and stuff, uh, retirement of funds and stuff like that. And the third model is a leasing model where you have a leasing contract with a third party who pre-finances, uh, for example, a large solar group. And you, uh, it's mostly, for example, farmers who do that, but with this uh, first construct that I told you also, it would be applicable to that. Um, the farmer can then deduct the leasing fees from his operating expenses for his farms. Uh, the, the lease is exactly as high as the solar revenue, so it's, it's uh, a walkthrough for most of the time. But then when the leasing uh, contract expires, the farmer has incidentally dated it such that it's, uh, it's also when he retires. So after that, he can use this as uh, a specific kind of revenue and add to his pension. So these are the kinds of schemes that have come up and, and uh, help create wealth. Uh, so really Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I won't keep you, but uh, just uh, um, wanted to thank uh, uh, Dr. Rome for a very stimulating talk. Uh, give, give them lots to think about and hopefully to act on. I'm hoping that maybe someday someone in this room will uh, travel the world like you do and talk about the success of <laughs> Thank you.
again, and I'm not sure if we're online on web or whatever with uh, Acadia anymore or uh, Cape Breton yeah. University just a little bit. So uh, goodbye to our virtual audience and uh, thank you all for coming this evening and thank you to the Hannibal Foundation as well for and, and the Climate Change Network for making this talk possible. Thank you very much. Thank you.